morning, I came out first thing in the morning to start working on my ground cover for my vineyard and my watermelon area. And so I laid everything out. I laid out the irrigation to find out where the, the beds for the watermelons are. Brought out all my tools and then brought out my tiller and went to pull start it and the cord broke. So I just spent like an hour disassembling the pulley, rewinding uh, and putting on the cord from where it broke and putting it all back together. So I'm getting a little bit later start, but it's still early in the morning, but now I'm working in the hot sun. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the tiller. I'm gonna till right where you see that, the piping, the irrigation going all the way down and then all the way down like an L, that's where my watermelons are gonna be planted. And then each place that I have one of these double drip heads on going all the way down so once i get that done when i lay the ground cover i'll be able to put the hole right over the horse manure bed and then the drip irrigation and each of my watermelon beds are going to be treated it'll have sand soil and horse manure in it make for a beautiful bed if i just put down the ground cover i'm basically going in florida soil and that's all sand so i'm trying to make it better before i go through all the trouble of putting the ground cover so let me get started okay so i went ahead and finished tilling let me show you what it looks like now i'm using my hand tiller the walk behind because my tractor the tiller is what six foot wide so by using this I can relatively make, I think it's like a two foot bed. You can see my footprints all the way in the middle. So I came over here and then went that way. You can see this one really good. Well, now that I got this all laid out, what I need to do is mark the spots where I'm going to go ahead and put the compost so let me go ahead and start measuring okay so I went ahead and ran a stringer all the way down and over to make sure I have a straight line and then I measured on my irrigation where I have the hoses they're exactly six foot apart so now from that PVC to that PVC to that PVC on my markers, that's exactly six foot. So that's where I'm gonna make the beds in the, in the place where I till. So then when I put down the ground cover, relatively, it's gonna be a straight line and they're gonna be marked out and spaced out six foot apart. And that's the perfect distance for watermelon, six foot. And you can put them seven, eight, nine, ten, but you don't want to really put them closer than six foot. So anyway, I got a lot of shoveling to do, and it's hot out, so let me grab my shovel and get to work. Okay, out here first thing in the morning again. Little chill in the air. Feels good. I got to continue digging these watermelon beds. I started yesterday, it was way too hot, so I'm trying to get an early start <clears throat> so I could go ahead and dig down and make myself some watermelon beds all the way down and around. So let me get going. Okay, this may be hard to see, but from, from here up, I add it <coughs> uh, from, from where the shovel is here right here up i added some fill sandy soil so i added about a foot it compacted a little bit and then from here down you can see the dark soil that's my regular soil so that's about a shovel's length up 10 inches so what i'm trying to do is remove all the sand go down to the soil from last year <clears throat> I'm going to add composted horse manure 
and mix it in to make a nice loomy sandy composted bed for each of my watermelon plants okay so I did the first half of the watermelon beds I went down through the new, new soil that I put down because it was fluffier and softer now on each of the beds I have to break through and go through last year's dirt which is a little harder so for that I'm gonna start with the shovel let's see what happens but this is what the beds look like now this bed I wanted to do my tractor but I have a six foot bucket so I came in here and I took out a, a bucket full and the hole was just too big it wasn't squared up so I'm gonna rake this mound back in I already raked half of it I just wanted to show you I'm gonna rake the other half in and then I'm gonna square it off but right over here remember each each PVC pipe is a marker and that's six foot so let's check out all the beds you can see there in front of the markers and I went down to the harder soil but I'm gonna dig out about another foot and that's all gonna be nice soft fluffy drainageable composted horse manure mixed in with the sand I'm digging out it'll be nice and loomy and I think they're all gonna like it and I dug this whole row down here I'll just walk it like this and you can see everything is in front of the PVC pipe and that's all gonna be watermelons and these are right in front of my muscadine vines over here so I'm utilizing the space in between but this is where I planted my watermelons last year see that's probably how deep I'm gonna make all the holes right there go in front of it I squared it up I broke through the hard stuff just to see how deep I want to go so I'm gonna go as deep as I can and then mix it all in and fluff it up should make for a nice bed but I squared everything off just to see where I'm at plus it's hard work same thing with that one <clears throat> okay so yesterday I went ahead and pulled out my tiller my hand tiller the tractor tiller is too wide so when I pulled it out and I went to start it, the cord broke. So I spent over an hour disassembling the whole case in, took off the gas tank and the carburetor and everything just to get it off, to get to it. Cut the rope, tied the rope, back in there, wound it all up, put it together, and then came out and tilled. And by then the sun was out and it was pretty hot yesterday. So I got out here as soon as I could see first thing in the morning to start and I'm sweating up a storm now but You got the idea of what it looks like All the way down and around So these are where my watermelons grew last year and previous years. This is where they're gonna go this year I'm just prepping the soil better because I'm putting down ground cover and I don't want to have to hassle with it later. So I'm putting in the work now to get it done. Now my friend Tony, he knows some watermelon growers. And they're, through him, they're the ones who told me the proper way to grow watermelons. I used to plant them and water them with my garden. So they were getting a gallon a day. And then I was fertilizing when I fertilized my garden. But the growers water, oh, what was it? Five gallons a day, five gallons a day. And that waters them enough and you're not gonna overwater watermelons. So it keeps them filled with water. So when you have a heavy rain, it doesn't suck up the water and crack the melons and it works. Then he told me the proper way to fertilize, which is daily 
plus use granules so they're getting plenty of fertilizer that stops the end rot and things like that so you'll see how my watermelons turn out this year if you look back you can see how they turned out last year and another thing is when you water them properly and you fertilize them properly like I'm doing because I'm listening to the growers that grow thousands of acres and sell to the stores like Walmart, Sam's Club, and so forth. They can't be wasting time trying different things. They know what to do. So I'm doing what they're doing. And what it does when you properly water and fertilize is the flavor and the texture of the inside of the watermelon is greatly enhanced especially when you pick them vine ripe people don't realize that that if you grow a watermelon a melon or grapes or anything like that and you don't water and fertilize properly you'll get a crop and you'll eat it and it'll taste good same thing with tomatoes it'll taste good but once you start watering and fertilizing properly it enhances the flavor so much you can have two tomato plants side by side same variety water and fertilize one properly and water and fertilize the other one very little they're going to taste different so that's the difference when you properly fertilize and water so with that said I'm gonna take this off and start digging back at you Okay, so utilizing this over here and picking chops up the harder stuff and brings it up, then it's easier to shovel. Okay, so I know I'm going through the extreme and bring it to you so you can see what I'm doing. You don't have to do it this way, but I'm trying to garden like a pro. And I'm trying to increase the chances of having a beautiful watermelon crop and harvest and having the best tasting watermelons that I could grow. So I didn't have to do this. I want to do this. And I'm just showing you what I'm going through. So you know I just don't plant. And I'm lucky things turn out good. I'm planning ahead. And hopefully right here, year after year after year, all of these are going to just get better and better and better. Now the watermelons down that way come out perfect. The watermelons coming down this way, all the way down, they came out good, but you could clearly see that those were larger and more of them and came out better because the ground is harder over here. Even though I tilled it with the tractor, the tractor only does like six inches. So I'm going down deeper especially on this side to go ahead and make it fluffier next year this year i added maybe eight inches of sandy loamy soil that i dug out to do my composted chips in ground so next year when i dig that out i'm going to put it all over here and come up another six inches but for now Ugh. 
you see these chunks right here good soil but it's just harder for those roots to get in but now that I'm doing this those roots will be able to have fun okay so I'm pooping out I'm losing my energy sun's out over here this side was a lot harder but I got one two three more to go it's like running a marathon you can see the finish line and you're hoping you make it so I'm gonna finish chopping this and take a break because it is really back breaking work I'm not a construction worker so when I do this type of work I'm just soaking wet and I feel it so but check this out <laughs> okay so while I'm over here doing that I just look and my ever barren mulberry is filled look at that let me get out of the light over here look at them look at them um, glow in the Sun can you see all those they're just all over everything over here and that's a potted plant that's in my culvert pipe I'm hoping this year I'm gonna take it somewhere and plant it it'll grow a lot bigger and faster when I go ahead and transplant it so after I get the watermelons planted and the garden all planted and situated I'm gonna try to get rid of that because this whole area over here I want open this year okay so after I chopped up the the bottom in the hole I dug it out in this hole so how do I know what I'm doing is gonna benefit me or benefit my watermelon plants well the dirt that I was breaking up and removing was dark black and it was hard so it would be hard for the roots to grow through it but I broke through it and when I broke through it this is what it looks like so you can see the gray sand well I squared it off you can see on the wall over here that's black well there was about six inches of hard dirt and I broke through it now I'm down to the sand let me get in here okay this over here is really hard dirt and this here is better sand okay so I'm getting a sun on my so what I'm thinking is the water since I water every day five gallons it'll go through the nice loomy horse manure compost sandy soil it will go through the hard pan that I just got out of there and it'll reach the softer sand and it could just continue and go down through same thing with the roots if the roots go down deep it'll go all the way through there if the roots just want to stay in the compost great or if the roots want to stay high and go through the top that's great so so anyway that's kind of why I'm doing it um, it's experimental I'm pretty sure it's gonna work like that you have to start your plants from the roots up so I'm making a nice bed for the roots and then the plant should turn out properly with the proper amount of water and fertilizer and care but you want to start with a good rooted crop if it was growing in clay or hard pan the roots wouldn't be able to break through it and your crop won't be as good as if you prep each bed so anyway that's why I'm prepping it back at you okay so I got about six or seven more beds to go this side was shady that side there the Sun's on me so I'm taking a little breather I put my hat like this to get shade in my eyes because it's just too bright so anyway these beds are looking good I'm down to the sand once I finish over here digging them out 
I gotta go do some shopping. I gotta go to Harbor Freight food store and get some things done. Come home, do some laundry, clean house a little bit. Tomorrow morning I'll be back out here and I'm gonna bring my tractor over with horse manure. And I got some pure topsoil. So I'm gonna put like a scoop of topsoil, a scoop of manure, a scoop of sand, and just keep doing that until the hole is full. And then I'm gonna bring the hole up over the ground, maybe about six inches, cause it'll compact a little bit. But I do want it just a little bit higher here. You're supposed to plant watermelons on a little bit of a mound. So that's what I'm gonna do. And so when I'm done and I rake all this over, I'll take my tiller and I'll till it and the ground should be about six inches higher than the surrounding ground and my ground cover will go over that. So anyway, I just keep turning on the video as I'm progressing and you'll see from start to finish. And then later on the season, you'll see my garden tours of my watermelon crop growing nicely, hopefully, and me harvesting them and how I fertilize them and how I water them and every other video that I think I can make to help you guys out so your growing turns out better. So with that said, let me get going. Okay, so I got the beds 100% dug out. So let's see what it looks like. So you can see, I'm down to the sand on all my beds. So tomorrow, I'll come back here with the topsoil, composted manure, sandy soil, do a shovel of each, and then a shovel of each, and a shovel of each out of the tractor bucket until it's nice, sandy, loomy, composted soil. And then I'll come back in here and I'll till it under. And all my beds are marked off at six feet. Now I can't finish this last one until I get the tractor. I gotta level that out, compact it, and then dig it out so I can make it square like that. But you get the point, here they are. And I'm glad that sun is out hot right now. Okay, so this is my ground cover. I got it from the garden, around the muscadines, underneath my covert pots all the way across to my muscadine grapevine vineyard and then i'm going to continue out to my watermelon section and do this whole area that i'm standing on now you can see i have all my garden beds with ground cover so that's what i'm working on all my culvert pipes over there this year every other one's going to have like squash and stuff like that vegetables in it um, but there'll be some pollinator plants in it as well and this is it after i compost all that level it all up rake it i'm just going to continue that all the way out to the fence where i'm standing and all the way back down that way and then i should have a hundred percent ground cover out here and it's woven so water goes through and vapor comes out the ground stays cool underneath it and I won't have to deal with those weeds anymore and the watermelons are gonna grow on top and hopefully that will eliminate the fungus problem of being hot and damp and humid down on the ground when the Sun comes out it should evaporate all the water that's on top of the ground cover well we're gonna see how this works out by the way the professional watermelon growers that do thousands of acres they take ground cover put it on the back of the tractor on a big roll and they take it all across the property it has irrigation tubes underneath that lay flat until 
water and fertilizer that goes in it and they ground cover every bit of property that they grow watermelons on because they're growing quality watermelons for the stores which are regulated so I'm trying to grow like a pro so I'm copying what the professional growers do because I want the same results so let me get back to work okay so what I have here is really good composted chips this was a hundred percent chips like three years ago and right now it's pretty much a hundred percent organic topsoil so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit in each bed then I'm gonna go back and get myself some manure put some in each bed then I'm gonna put some sandy soil in there and mix it and then I'm just gonna repeat until it's filled up okay so here's the hole Okay, so I put some organic composted chips that turned into topsoil in the bottom. I'm going to do each hole. Okay, so you can see I'm putting four shovelfuls in each hole before I go ahead and get put the manure in. Okay, so now that I have the composted chips in there, that's basically organic soil. I got horse manure I'm going to put in there and then I'm going to put sand back in. Okay, this is pure horse manure. This is the sandy soil that I took out. Okay, so recap, dug a square bed down through the hard pan to the sandy soil, put composted chips that were basically three years old, roughly, 
that turned into good organic topsoil that's on the bottom of the hole. Then I put horse manure sand, turned it under, horse manure sand, turned it under, so it's nice, sandy, loomy, composted soil. Now I'm gonna do this for every bed, so let me get to work. Okay, so I got this composted and filled in with everything you've seen me talk about. I still have that side to go, but for now, since all these are filled in, I'm gonna go ahead and till it under, and then I'll start on this section. Okay, so I went ahead and tilled it all under. You can see what it looks like when it's tilled. Now I'm still going to come in here and scrape all that and level it and compact it so I could put down the ground cover. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and tackle that. But here you go. Don't that look pretty? Nice, good, composted, loomy soil for watermelons or any plant. Plus I got a mark so I know exactly where the beds are. So let me get to work. Okay, so I finished putting all the compost and sand and chips and everything in all these beds, just like I did them. So now I'm gonna till it under and I am done for the day. Okay, so I tilled that under. I'm still gonna have to rake it and contour it. Now, just to show you what tilling's all about, look at this, when I put my foot in it, look how far down you could compress it. It's nice and fluffy. So anyway, all these beds are complete. All these beds are complete. All I got to do is 
smooth out the whole area, compact it down, put my ground cover on, cut the slits, put my irrigation in, and plant my watermelons that I have inside the house under LED lights. And I'm gonna sow some too, that way they, um, they mature and ready to harvest at different intervals. So with that said, I'm going inside the shower, have lunch, and go shopping. Back at you.